sadly, there's, there's not enough of it. Um, you know, the, the amount going into places like Indonesia is pitifully small compared to what's needed. To put it in context, uh, there's about 20 million hectares of degraded land in Indonesia. Uh, it costs somewhere around $4,000 per hectare to upgrade that land. So that's about $80 billion that's required. So that's institutional money that needs to come in. We have a foundation we set up 10 years ago, and that does a lot of work in the environment. And as one of our investments on the, on the foundation side, we got involved with some rainforest in Sulawesi. And we were looking at what could we do that would keep that rainforest there forever, instead of us just putting money in each year to preserve it. And that took us down a path at looking, of looking at why it is that the rainforest is under threat and looking basically at the area of rural poverty. And the area around the rainforest uh, is, is really very, very poor. So what could we do to bring money in to bring up the livelihoods of people that are around the forest? And that's where we started from. Well, it's, it's immensely complicated because you've got a lot of smallholders, uh, about four million smallholders, for example, in Indonesia alone uh, involved in palm oil. And a lot of them don't have land title. Two thirds of them are in debt. So on the face of it, it's just not bankable as a sector. Well, I think it's very exciting because it makes it scalable. You know, for the first time, you can really address four million smallholders. You, before this software came along, you couldn't do it because you couldn't really access in a cheap and cost-efficient way uh, such a large number. So it, actually what it's done is suddenly to make all these people uh, eligible for finance and, and to bring them really into, into the modern world. So it's very, very exciting what's going on. Blockchains are a, a mechanism to, to lower the cost and to ensure the security of what's going on. Um, so it gives, gives people comfort that, that the integrity of the system is there. Um, but I think that you know, there are various mechanisms that can be used and, and blockchain is one of them. Um, you know, we're looking at the software packages that have integrity themselves. About a year ago, because we were looking at a solution for, for low-cost way to connect smallholders to big money. So something had to, had to be there. Something had to, to, to link the two together in a way that was cost efficient. And this software, um, you know, the more we looked at different packages, the more we were uh, convinced there was going to be a solution. There's the connectivity between you know, what's on the ground and the big institutional money, which includes money coming out of Paris, is essential. And I think as comfort levels go up that these mechanisms work, then so the amount of investment that goes to grassroots level will in increase. And I think it's one of those things that the more people talk about it, the more people air it, the, the more people solve the problem, and the more uh, pace uh, of investment picks up. So, uh, I think watch this space. In a year, I think everyone will be saying this is terrific and there, there are so many initiatives going on. And in five years, people will say, gosh, that was really the starting point right here at C4. So, terrific. <laughs>